you. And those that thought that the fire would consume you, but yet the fire made you stronger. It made you better. Made you see God in a different light. Give our praise in my hand. I have no reason to fear. No reason. No reason. Thank God. No reason. Thank God. The mountains are tall, but I, I have no reason. No reason to fear. God. I have no reason to fear. First lady, come on, come on now. Feel something. Thank God. Come on.
get to give. Because when you're happy, you're going to give. Come on, brothers, come on up to the front. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> This is a part of our worship. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! For the word is about to sow and about to reap. Come on, God. I feel God in here now. Quickly. Quickly, pray for all your offering. If you need an envelope, wave your hand. One of our ushers will pray the Lord. Get with you. Perhaps you came this morning and forgot to check book or forgot to even bring cash. We got you covered this morning. You can use our cash app, pray the Lord, which is dollar sign, the way church, 6600. Pray the Lord. Dollar sign, the way church, 6600. Giving is a part of worship too. Yes. Everywhere God bless the children of Israel, you would see them offer up something to God. Yes. Here you are in the last month, the first Sunday of the last month of 2018. And can you just take a minute and think about before you heal? Can you just take a moment and think about? Everything you went through from January the 1st until December the 2nd and all the stuff that God brought you through. Anybody been through some stuff this year? Don't play with me. I mean some things that you haven't even told anybody and you're still here and you're still standing. That means you ought to want to give something to God to show him I'm grateful for what you have done in my life. I want you to know that I wouldn't be where I am had it not been for you on our side. Once you get your offering, if you will stand and lift it in your right hand. My attitude today is not, Lord, I got to pay tithe. My attitude is, Lord, I get an opportunity to yield hallelujah to your kingdom hallelujah father we thank you yes we give you the glory this offering we can't pay you lord for what you have done but we can show you a token of our appreciation and our gratitude not a debt that we owe but this is a seed that we sow lord bless this offering Use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Tear it down of the strongholds of the enemy. If you do this, Lord, we'll give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. Come on and say amen. amen. Those of you that are watching my Facebook Live, please participate in this part of the worship. Amen. Put your offering under the umbrella of the anointing in this way, church. Come on, somebody. And watch God bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, ushers, serve the people. Come on, please exit the middle of the aisle and return to your seats on the outside.
you for your liberality. Give it all up to God of praise. Hallelujah. We're so glad to be here today. Are you glad to be here? Amen. Are you glad to be here? find somebody and greet them and just love on them for just a minute and tell them I'm so glad that you made it. Come on. The Jesus sent me. The Jesus sent you. The Jesus sent you. The Jesus sent me. So Make sure she's easy on the eyes. 
but also find somebody that's a worker that come, amen, to be a helpmate for you, praise the Lord. And I tell you what, if you get somebody to get in the fight with you, praise the Lord, you can stand. Come on, tell us that. Hallelujah. This morning uh, has quickly turned to this afternoon. Praise the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. My prayer is that you will receive it joyfully. Amen. Definitely not. Praise the Lord. My intentions are not to shout to you. But I don't have any control over that. Because if you receive it joyfully, that means something touch your spirit. Come on, somebody. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, I want to go to St. Luke's Gospel, the ninth chapter. And there I want to read verses 57 through 62. St. Luke chapter 9, 57 through 52. And I want to go to the book of James, the first chapter, verses 2 through 8. James, the first chapter, verses 2 through 8. When you have your hands on these scriptures, you will signify by standing and saying, Amen, as the custom of this house. Amen. Amen. While you're standing, I want to praise the Lord. Thank God for the awesome vision banked on yesterday. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Everything was lovely. Praise the Lord. Even the food. Amen. I don't know if the food was supposed to be uh, hors d'oeuvres or you know a light snack, but we got we got dinner. Yes, <laughs> I tell you what, I, I could have went home, praise the Lord, and went straight to sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 You give him the grace. Yes. 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 moving on the inside, that's a sign that something is about to turn around. <laughs> Does anybody feel that? Something is about to turn around. temptations, 
knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. Yes. But let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God and give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not. It shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Somebody say faith. 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 Nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Today I want to speak from this subject. I'm all in. I'm all in. Why don't you look at somebody and tell them I'm all in. I'm all in. Father, may we do no damage to your word, but speak that which is sound, which is right, which is true. We speak as the oracles of God on today, and that your word fall on good ground and yield some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Every glad heart said, Amen. 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 On your way down, tell somebody I'm all in. All in. All in. All in. All in. I was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost in January of 1990 at the age of 10. And I was very young and excited about having the Holy Ghost. And while a lot of people seem to be genuinely happy for my conversion experience, there was some skepticism, praise the Lord, about whether or not I really understood what I was saying and what I was confessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And the, the truth, I can tell you, I probably didn't understand him if I I just knew I was saved, praise the Lord. In fact, most of you, when you first get saved, you don't understand everything, no matter what age you are. But you know that God has come in and did something different in your life. Yes. Amen. And praise the Lord. One older brother from our church in South Carolina, he's very young. He told me one day, praise the Lord, he told me, he said, if you're not real, he said, in about six years, you're going to quit. You're going to be right back out in the world. Praise the Lord. So, amen. I didn't know exactly how to think about that, but I, you know, kept what he said. I'll tell you what, I thank God for that statement because that statement gave me a goal to shoot for. <laughs> year one, year two, got down in year six, and past years, he goes, oh, I must have been real friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God I passed the test. Amen. I preached my initial sermon when I was 14. And again, and there came some mixed reactions. Some were proud and supportive. And again, some questioned whether or not I even had the right uh, to preach. Amen. <laughs> 24 years later, I'm still preaching the gospel. Amen. You know, the proof is in the pudding. Sometimes we spend way too much time trying to prove to others that we are something. Amen. When all you really need to do is just live the life. All you really need to do is just do what you're supposed to do. And don't worry about behaviors and the spectators. Just live it because if it's real, it's going to last. And if it's not real, it doesn't matter how much effort you put in trying to make it last, it's going to fall. I'd rather know that Amen. Praise the Lord that I'm lacking in an area so that I get what I need. Yes. Then to go years and years and years and realize, you know, this ain't working. Yes. Whether it's been remaining loyal to my faith or maintaining 
a positive reputation as a minister of the gospel, praise the Lord, or being faithful to my wife, amen, almost 20 years, praise the Lord, amen, I must say that God has been faithful in sustaining me, praise the Lord. And while I do give God the praise because every good and perfect gift comes from God, I will say that my consistent factor in a walk with Christ and all of these things is having a made-up mind. Amen. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today, a lot of people never commit to anything. Y'all don't like my talk. They don't commit to school, college, staying on a job. Come on, somebody. Yes. Or even being a part of the church. They, they don't ever get committed. Uh -huh. And as a result of their non-committal ways, they are inconsistent yeah. with their walk, with Christ. Yes. They are inconsistent, amen, in, praise the Lord, their relationship, praise the Lord. And today, I want to take a few moments to talk with you and declare, amen, that I'm all in. Uh -huh. But it's going to take a made-up mind. Yes. Can I talk about that today? Yes, yes. Praise God and shout it. Praise God. I think I can talk for a few minutes. Yes. Jesus, amen, encounters three prospects in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. And, amen, these potential followers, I believe, represent, amen, followers today. So when we talk about these followers, I want to see if you could possibly see yourself in one of these three guys. The first one, after hearing Jesus teach, a man, praise the Lord, impulsively declares, Lord, I'm going to follow you wherever you go. Yeah. Now that's after we had one of them hot serves. Yeah. One of them knockout, drag out, you know. Yes. Praise the Lord, the Lord, the anointing fell. You fool, there is a God. And usually, when, when something has gone extremely well, your emotions are high, and you make an emotional decision. Yes, sir. That's right. And this emotional decision is void of any real commitment or any real depth, praise the Lord. You just felt good Amen. because things went well. Yeah. Right. Only problem with that kind of a commitment is no real deep commitment because what happens when it wasn't a good service? What happens when the preacher didn't walk in the house? He put his hand behind his ear. What, what happens when, praise the Lord, fire didn't fall? Oh, y'all quiet. Yes. Amen. Amen. So this guy said, Lord, I'm going to follow you wherever you go. And you know it sounds good. It sounds good to the Lord. And it sounds good to leaders to hear people affirm that I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm going to follow you. I'm, we're going we, we to do this thing. Praise the Lord. But Jesus, because he knows everything, he knows the ending of a thing from the beginning, he cautions this man. He, he talks to him. He says, now what I want you to understand, he says, praise the Lord, that the, 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 the birds have nests and the foxes, praise the Lord, have holes. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. I have no certain dwelling place. I don't fit in. I want that to sink in for you. And if you're going to follow me, you must be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Amen. You must be comfortable with not fitting in with everybody. And if you're somebody that has to consistently always have the affirmation of people to feel good about yourself or to feel good about your commitment, I want you to know you're not going to make it. All right. Boy, y'all quiet. Yes. Amen. If you're the type of person that can only serve God and come to church when things look good, praise the Lord, your commitment level is not deep enough. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Right. You get up on Sunday morning and your car is full of gas mm -hmm. and everything looks good. You open your refrigerator and there's plenty of food in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to church this morning. Who wouldn't go to church mm -hmm. with things going well? Uh, Y'all yeah, yeah. quiet. Yeah. 
But I can remember, amen, because the pastor that I had required that I be in church every service, every time the door opened. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That was faithfulness. And because I wanted to be a part of it, I did it, praise the Lord. And I can remember, amen, going through, me and my wife, going through our couches looking for pennies. Yes, Y'all quiet up there. Yes. Trying to piece together some change. To put gas in my car. Yes. To drive from Wendell to Durham, North Carolina. Oh, yeah. oh, y'all quiet. Yeah. See, some of y'all might can't relate to that because you won't go that far with it. Right. You like the Lord understand I ain't got no money. Yes. The Lord understand. Uh -huh. Y'all don't like my talk. Yes. But then when Monday morning comes, you'll find some gas yes. money. Yes. Go to the bridge. See, I told y'all y'all wasn't going to shout with this guy. Telling the truth, though. Praise the Lord. When it comes time for you to do something that you like to do, you'll call this friend and, and say, listen, I need, let me hold something. I'll pay you when my checks come in. Yeah, 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 Why? Because that is more of a priority to you. And, and so the Lord says, praise the Lord, if you're going to follow me, you need to understand what kind of commitment that means. Because words with God don't mean anything if there is no real action or commitment backed up. In fact, you can't even build a ministry or a church on somebody that has a non-committal spirit. Talk, Pastor Scott. I'm so excited that the Lord is blessing church and we are growing. I'm, and I'm not fighting that. I, please, keep coming. Keep growing. Yes. Keep adding to them. I'm not going to kill that. But what I am saying is, praise the Lord, there has to be a time of reckoning that I say, okay, what is your commitment level? Yes. Because if you go too deep or too far with somebody and you're not committed to what you're doing, at the moment that I really need a strong commitment, you will be wavering. And that is an area and a time where I need somebody who is solid enough to say, I'm in the trenches along with you. Amen. This is not just words. This is my action. I'm here. Amen. Amen. Yes. 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 It's going to be rough, but stick with me. He says, don't expect to fit in. And, and, and understand this. Know this. Brother Leon, that because of your commitment, sometimes your commitment will cause you not to belong to any particular group. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got a committed attitude and the people that you are dealing with are not a committed type people, you will seem like a fanatic to them. Yes. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, when, you, when you have a mindset that says, I'm going all the way with the Lord, not just church, but even in my lifestyle. When you say, I'm going all the way with God, people that don't have that same mindset, they think you are crazy. Yes. They think that you are fanatical. They even act the way you, you must belong to a cult. You're going to go to church that many times a week? Y'all stay in high low? And y'all do, and you give money? You, you commit at least a tenth of your money to the church? Oh yeah, they got you brainwashed. They see your actions, but they don't understand your motivation and your reason. My reason is not that I'm so in love with a man or even a church building. My reason is that this God that I serve came in and changed my life and I commit myself to serving him for his goodness. Following Christ will make you uncomfortable. Amen. And demands your loyalty. Amen. This is one thing that you can't play with. This is one thing that you can't get to the edge of the water and stick your toe in the water. You either got to go in or stay out of it. Right. Hallelujah. And, and sometimes it feels good, praise the Lord, to have folk amen, and crowd you out and tell you all good stuff. But when it comes down to a kingdom business and kingdom work, you got to know who is committed. Because there's going to be some days 
praise the Lord, where you ain't going to like me. And I'm not going to like you. If you just join this ministry because pastor has a nice attitude, and I like pastor. He's just, his personality is so good, you better stay away right now. Come on, man. And just leave now because I'm, I'm, I'm warning you that you're not going to always like my attitude. That's right. I, this is a, a disclaimer I'm putting up front, praise the Lord. And, and, and every message that I preach is not going to always make you shout and dance. Right. Everything that I say is not going to always feel good to your flesh. There's going to be some things that you're going to be engaged in with your lifestyle that I'm going to have to cry against and tell you that you can't do that and be right with God. Amen. And you've got to make up your mind right now, despite what he tells me, am I in or am I out? Yeah. Amen. You can't be like a man that, praise the Lord, got his main girlfriend right here, but got Sally across town and, and, and Susan on the other side of town and, and is afraid to just say, you know what, I'm going to marry you. No, I'm going to be careful. Because just in case you don't act right, then I got Susie over there. That's not real commitment. Amen. Amen. Lord, they quiet you. Yes. So we got a good crowd here today, Lord. Amen. But I think y'all go ahead. Go ahead. The second prospect didn't come to Jesus. Jesus went to him. Isn't that interesting? Jesus goes to somebody else yes. and says, follow me. And you know what the Lord said, follow me. You ought to follow the Lord. That's, that's, that's a big thing. Jesus said, follow me. You didn't go out to him here. Follow me, Alex. Look like you would just say, yeah. Follow me. But bless the Lord. He said, yeah, Lord, I, I'll follow you. But let me first go bury my father. Now, the burying of your father wasn't the bad part. Okay? I want you to stick with me. Going to bury your loved one wasn't the bad part. That's not really what kind of ticked Jesus off a little bit. The, 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 the part where he said, let me first go bury my father. Mm -hmm. Which speaks to your priority. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all quiet. Mm -hmm. Jesus is talking about the urgency of the gospel. Mm -hmm. He is talking about the urgency of bringing mankind into his kingdom and expanding it. And this man, when the Lord gives him the opportunity, pray the Lord to follow him and preach the gospel, he says, okay, I'll go, but let me first bury my dad. Now, Jesus' response was, pray the Lord, let the dead bury their dead, and you go preach the kingdom. We're going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Now, I want you to understand, Jesus was not being harsh in what he was saying, but what he was doing, praise the Lord, he was establishing a precedent in this man's life. And that precedent was, I must be first in everything. I must be first. If you're going to follow me, I must be first priority in everything that I do. And if you don't start me out being first, then I'm not going to be first. Because let me help you understand something. When a man or a woman make a decision to start following Christ, all kinds of situations are going to arise. Praise the Lord. You're going to have trouble every kind of way. Family problems going to come up. Come on, somebody. Money trouble going to come up. Health issues are going to come. The church going to get crazy. Praise the Lord. All kind of things happen when you make a, a commitment to follow God. But in everything that happens, God must be heard. It's so funny, praise the Lord. I saw folk, amen, hallelujah, sitting in the rain watching a football game. But if it rain on a Sunday, you can't come to church because it's rain. Yes. In the snow, watching them throw a football. Yeah. 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 Now, I'm not against football. I'm not, you 
know, I'm not a big sports fan, but I mean, if, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Yeah. If the Cowboys is your team, well, praise God. If you like the Redskins or whatever it might be, pray that, hey, that's your team. Yeah. But what I'm trying to tell you, if God doesn't come first, then you can't say, give an honor to God who is the first of my life. See how quiet it gets when you bring it down to the wire? Because when you're happy and you're feeling good and the spirit's moving, everybody feels like, oh God, God, you know, I'm with the Lord. But 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 see, you got to make a decision for God aside from your emotions. Yes. This cannot be an emotional commitment. Yes. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. amen. This cannot be an emotional decision. Well, the Bible says, husbands love your wife like Christ loved the church. That is not an emotional decision. It is not, I love you because I feel butterflies rolling around in my stomach. It is not, I love you because you look better, praise the Lord, than whoever the most prettiest woman is in the United States right now. It is not, I love you because, praise the Lord, things just so, no, 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 no. The love that Christ is talking about is not an emotional love, but it is an act of the will that I decide with my own will to love you. Yeah. And I don't, I, and y'all pray for me, because I, I used to believe it, Sister Nelly. I used to believe that there was just this one person in the world that God chose that you could be married to, and he chose that person, and that was your soulmate for life. And, and, and I used to believe that, praise the Lord. But time and having lived a little bit helped me to understand, praise the Lord, that the right one is the one that you choose. And the one that you choose to make it work with. Because you can be in love with the person that you think is your soulmate and don't have a mind to make it work and you'll bust up. Y'all don't like my talk of it. In other words, my love, hallelujah, is not based upon how I feel about you. My love is based upon my commitment. And I said, I will love you, praise the Lord. I will cherish you. I will honor you. And I will keep you as long as we both shall live. That's what I said. Rich, poor, better, or worse. That's my promise. That is my commitment to you. And it has nothing to do with how I feel right now. Because someday, you going to look ugly. Amen. Husbands, look at me. Don't you look at your wife. They might get you. Wake up in the morning with your house standing on top of your head. Yes, you will. Yes, Lord. Talk. Lord. 
Everybody by quiet. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 We are heirs of the grace of God together. My commitment, I'm committed to love you. I'm committed to care for you. Even if I don't feel, even if you act like the devil today, I'm still I still love you. Yeah. You my devil. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, y'all ain't, y'all ain't ready to agree, but that's okay. Hallelujah. Church is not about an emotional commitment. Serving the Lord is not. And then see, that's the reason why you have so many church hoppers. And you have so many people that won't commit to anything. Because the moment it don't go the way you want, I'm out. The moment I don't agree with you, I'm out. You can't serve God halfway committed. Amen. You're not going to be no good to anybody. You ain't going to be good to your wife halfway committed. That's right. You ain't going to be no good to your husband halfway committed. Because I'm going to tell you something. Some days you ain't going to feel like making no eggs and bacon that morning. But he wants some eggs and bacon. Amen. <laughs> and if he asks you for some eggs and bacon, I man, I can't do it. Then you got to do it. Don't get up there and tell me, me and my husband, we won. You ain't won. You <laughs> acting too. <laughs> you ain't sick. Your arm ain't broken, you just didn't want to do it simply because you just don't want to. You ain't won. <laughs> Honey, I want to go to Alabama. Well, we can't go to Alabama, it's not in our budget, but we, I want to go somewhere. And I'm going to get the money for us to go to Alabama. Listen, he told you, y'all going to get mad with you. Yeah. He told you that on our budget, we can't do it. Uh -huh. So what that means is if you're following him, you've got to go according to his budget, uh -huh. not what you can do. Uh -huh. Because when you say, well, I'll go get it so I can do what I want to do, then what you have said, I'm going to act just like Eve. Adam said, don't uh -huh. eat up this tree. And the devil got in her mind and said, you know you can do it. And she gave it to him. Now, he profited from eating from the tree. But when they both got in trouble, both of them was in trouble. Amen. Just because you can do it don't mean you should. Amen. You go out and work your own little stuff and get your own stuff. Yeah, you got, I got it. I got the bacon. I found it. And then when your husband don't look at you the same way no more, right. why don't he love me no more? Because right. you just told him you don't need him. I'm going to help you today. God created you sisters to be a helpmate to the man. That's right. You, pray the Lord, are supposed to help him. He, praise the Lord, is supposed to feel needed by you. Amen. And if there is no need, there is, see, his attraction to you is based upon your need for him. It's built in. See how quiet they is? See, nobody ain't going to help. Because you can buy all the roses and sprinkle your bed covered with chocolates on it and have some wine on the side of the bed and have a steaming night. But when you get up the next morning after you done have a steaming night, now you got to live with it. You done had a wild night of, of making love. And then you get up the next morning, you can't even talk peaceable to one another. Because it's not all about sex. It's about intimacy. And you can't be intimate if you're not going to be committed. Amen. and shout and roll all over the floor and then get out and the devil just use me like a dirty dish rag because you're not committed. Amen. You got to be committed to living this life. Amen. And I'm not talking about because you're scared to go to hell. If God has saved you, you're saved. It ain't about going to hell. It's about walking in victory. If you're not living a victorious life, it's because there's something you're not doing. Yes. Amen. The word, the gospel, is designed for us to live and to walk victorious. But you got to do what it says. Yes. Amen. 
Y'all get anything out of this? Yes, sir. Y'all might not be able to finish this. Good. Good. Now, he says, let me first go bury my father. In our people, everything, everything comes before the Lord. Everything comes before coming to church. I would go to church, but you know, we got this going on. Okay. And when I first started pastoring, y'all know where I come from. And if you didn't show up to church, praise the Lord, if you didn't show up on time, amen, I worked from you real hard. In fact, you would be the message. There, there would be no message from the Lord. You gave me the message. And I'm take my time and just work on you. Just mm, make you feel that good. Hallelujah. Y'all don't like my talk. But, but, but see, the truth of the matter is, if I have to make you do something that you, by choice and commitment, should be willing to do, something is wrong with me. If I've got to beat you into submission, that's not true submission. You should want to do right because it's right to do right. That's right. When you say, I'm all in, Pastor, you're saying whatever it takes to get this thing going to what God wants it to be, I'm willing to do it. And that means I'm going to put God first as a priority. I have a question for you. Is God first in your life? God first? Is he first? Is he first? Is he first? If, 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 if he's first, why can't you get to church on time? If he's first. Talk pastor. Go ahead. If he's if he's first, why is it that so much other things take more of your time if, if he's first? If he's first, let, let, let me look at your checkbook. Is he first? What what what, what do you give to God versus Walmart? Or Macy's or McDonald's. Is he first? Yes. See, I'm talking real folks stuff right now. I'm not talking about to see, praise the Lord. Yes. I've got to preach what he gave me this year. And he said new. Yes. But in order for you to walk in new, your mindset got to shift from walking in the old. Yes. And you got to commit yourself to new. And that means that in committing myself to new, I'm not gonna always feel like being new, but you got to be new. That's right. You got to break those old habits. Yes, sir. Amen. You got. To. Yes, yes, sir. I'm looking for the Lord to break this into some of the stuff God didn't give you. Amen. God is not under obligation to break anything. God, you got to break it. Because serving God is as much a part of discipline. Yes. See, some of y'all, y'all want it easy. You want to go down on your knees and pray and speak in tongues. You want the pastor to call the brother and lay hands on you, fall out, you get back up, boom, I'm delivered, everything is free. Uh -huh. But I want you to understand that deliverance is a process. Yes. Look at somebody say, deliverance yes. is a process. Yes. Because see, God can touch you initially with his power and give you a grace to come out of the thing, but you're going to have to walk it out in your everyday life. Yes. You're going to have to change some habits that opened up the door for that thing to get a hold. You're going to have to change your mindset. That's what repentance is. I decided to change my mind. Let me tell you something. When a man gets ready to find a woman, when he's ready, now when, he, when he's a boy, he's a, he's a boy, he's playing the field. I know some of y'all women probably is you trying to turn a boy into a man. He ain't ready to be a man. I don't like my talk yes. over here, but I'm a preacher. Yes. When, when, when he's a boy, he like this one because she got a Coca-Cola ball of shape. He like that one because she got long hair. He like that one because she know how to cook. Come on, somebody. But he's non-committal to none of them. Praise the Lord. And when you, amen, get in a relationship with a non-committal type, and you start bringing up, you know, it sure would be nice to be married. <laughs> then they get gone for about two weeks. Uh -huh. They get ghosts for about a month. And then when they think you done forgot, then they now they're back to call them. Because uh -huh. they figure you forgot. Yeah. And, and you sisters, you know, because you play the game with them. 
You play with, see that choir today, Jesus? <laughs> you play the game right along with him. And you say, well, you know, praise the Lord. You know, he, he maybe he ain't ready to heal. But then when you bring it up two months later, he get gone again. Uh -huh. You know why? Because he's a boy that's playing. He's not ready to be a man. But when a man is ready to find a wife, praise the Lord, hallelujah to God, he steps up to the place and says, you know what, you is who I want, I don't want nobody else, that's it, I'm committing to you. The problem is, your mindset got to change. Your mindset has to change. And until your mind changes, you're going to be stuck going around the same old circle. Y'all don't like my thoughts. I thought about our church, and I thought about what he was doing Amen. At our church. And I thought about how we had been at our location, praying the Lord, for 10 years. Come on, somebody. Amen. And we had, had building fund projects that didn't produce any fruit. We had, praise the Lord, different services. We had plans to do this and do that, but nothing would materialize. And God spoke to me and he said, you know, this was never my plan. That was your plan, Scott. And when God unfolded his plan to me, I said, okay, I'm all in, praise God. And, and, and sometimes when you get all in, it means that you got to do it at the expense of looking crazy to other people. When, when, when you say, I'm all in, praise God, it means you got to do what the Lord has placed in you, even though everybody don't understand. And I want you to understand that when you're following God, everybody don't get a vote in your life, praise God. Everybody don't get a vote to tell you how it's going to be done. You've got to follow God for yourself. Come on, say amen. Then the last man, praise the Lord, he went to, he said, praise the Lord, he said, you know, I'll follow you, but let me first go back home and say goodbye to those at home. And he said this, the Lord said this, he said, no man, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, looking back, amen, that signed his hand to the plow while looking back is fit for the kingdom. In other words, he said, nobody that's talking about doing work for God while you are torn going back, praise the Lord, you're not even fit to be in God's kingdom. What, what, what am I trying to tell you? Your loyalties for God cannot be divided. You've got to stay focused. And, and, and I was thinking on this. While I was thinking on the word on last night, I was thinking, I was thinking, and, 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 and this is what came up to me. But Leon, what came up to me was excuses don't excuse. The reason why folk have excuses when it comes to doing what you're supposed to do is because your mind is not in it. That's it. Your heart is not in it. Y'all don't like my talk. Yes. The reason why you are in and out and up and down and you can't make a solid decision is because your mind has not been made up, praise God. But there is a certain power that takes place when you make up your mind. It's just like folk that come to the altar, praise the Lord, and, and, and they're tearing for the Holy Ghost, and they act like they're trying to receive the power of the Holy Ghost is so hard. Like, God is sitting there dangling the Holy Ghost, like, oh, you almost got it. Oh, you almost got it. Oh, you almost got it. Praise God. And, and what I'm trying to help you to understand, God don't play with people about His Spirit. He wants you to have every good and perfect gift. The problem is, your mind ain't really made up, praise God. Because when your mind gets made up, how do you stop making excuses for not doing right? When your mind gets made up, you stop blaming everybody for your mess up, and you start, amen, accepting responsibility. But I'm anointed to go right straight through that. Go ahead. Judgmental. And you know, we got to make church secret friend. I'm, I'm not against that. I'm not against, praise the Lord, us doing right by people. But what I am telling you, when somebody makes up their mind that they want to live right and do right, you can't beat them away with a stick. When somebody makes up their mind that following God, following Jesus is what I really want to do. Hallelujah. The word can't come too hard for them. 
because they have made up their mind that I'm going all the way with God. Honey, I'm going all the way with God. Great God. You know, we don't have a we don't have a sin problem. And we, we don't even have a church problem. What we have is a problem with people that have not made up their mind that I'm all in. Praise God. Hallelujah. But when I make up my mind that I'm all in, hallelujah, I keep my focus. Hallelujah. On what God has promised me. There is the prize. And I'm pressing my way toward the prize of the heart calling. Y'all don't like my That you're going all the way. Yeah. James comes along. I got to hurry up coming. Yeah. James comes along. Yeah. And said, my brother, yeah. count it all joy. Yeah. When you fall yeah. into diamond temptations, yeah. he says, yeah. count it joy, yeah. not if you fall, yeah. but when you fall. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. trouble is coming. Yeah. I'm telling you, disappointment is on the horizon. I'm promising, I don't even have to prophesy this. I'm promising that somebody is going to fight against you. I'm promising you, you're going to have haters and spectators. I'm promising you that sickness is going to touch your body. I'm promising you, you're going to have to sit in church with somebody you don't even like or you're too honest you might love them but you might not quite like them all the time I promise you there's going to be something going on in your life that's going to contradict the promise that God made to you I wonder if I have anybody in here today that can say Lord I have some contradictions I have some crisis of my faith where it Look like what you promised me. Hallelujah. But my commitment and my faith told me I'm going to praise it through the contradiction. I'm going to give it the glory even though I'm being tested. I'm going to say yes. Hey. Some of y'all shot because you can. But I want to see somebody that shouts because you know he's good and you know he's faithful. I've had some disappointments. I've had some sorrows. Say yes, Lord. I've had some ups and downs. Yes, Lord. But the Lord is good to me. That's why when I saw the Sharif up there singing on the Something begin to leap up over you because most of us, I didn't say all of us, but I said most of us have not been through that this year. They man to lose a baby that you got to give birth to yourself. Y'all don't like my talk. How do you come to church when you don't even feel like being in church? So look at people and smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
on you. It can be emotionally draining. Because the promise and the vision is so great. And some folks, when they see the foundation, they shock them because of the foundation. But I'm looking at what we got to get done. I'm like, Lord, and they're not committed enough, Lord. They're not committed. Because when you let a football game keep you from church, you, you, you're not committed. You're not committed. You're not committed until you bring your pocketbook into the visions. I love you. We can shout and we can holler. We can grab each other around the way to skip across the field and enjoy. But, but, but if you ain't got no skin in the game, you ain't in. That's right. It's going to cost you. What, what, what are you willing to give up? What are you willing to say, I'm all in? I'm all in. I had several big time positive bishops come to me and want me to be under their covering. I mean, they, they promised me. Some big stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But their direction was not what God called me to. Yeah. And I had to forego looking like a millionaire uh -huh. to do what God said to me and to be committed. Yes. You got to be committed even if it makes you look like you're losing. Yes, Commitment is not just up here talking about how committed you are. Commitment is when you put all of your money in the church as a leader and it still ain't enough because of the bills. And you got to pay it. And you go home. And there was a tag on your belt that said the water has been disconnected. Oh, y'all quiet I'm talking about commitment. When your house goes into foreclosure because you're trying to keep God's house open. I'm talking about commitment. Praise God. See, starting a ministry ain't the same as inheriting a ministry. Right. Folk will talk and will give you all kind of advice about what to do. But if you ain't in what I mean, shut up. Because it don't mean nothing to me. Because if you're not putting your neck out there on the line, all you're doing is just talking. I don't need talk. I need somebody to put their money where their mouth is. I'm all in. <laughs> 19 years later, I'm all in. And if the Lord had not have been with me, there would be no doors of the way church open. But because God is faithful to do what he said, what I was able to do, I did. But when I couldn't do no more, God had to make a blessing. God had to make a blessing. I'm, 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 I'm really about to finish, y'all. I told y'all we're trying to make a shot. What I want you to understand is, we might say, Pastor Scott, why do you tell that kind of stuff? Why do you tell about your life and, and, and how stuff? Because you know, most folks are embarrassed they ever tell you that they ever went through those kinds of things. But see, I'm not embarrassed. I wear it as a badge of honor. Because many folk don't give up nothing to come to church. And, and the moment the pastor asks for an extra offering, they complain. They complain, but they got, you know, they got a cushion. They know what they're going to do when they get home. But what I'm looking at, Lord, if you don't move for me, not only will there not be no church, but there ain't going to be no Scott trial either. <laughs> You see the difference between somebody that's all in and somebody that's talking? 
when you all leave, you don't leave the church and forget that there's church. It's on your heart. It's on your mind. Where can I serve? What can I? Y'all hear me talking, young people? He called the old because they know the way, but he called the young because they're strong. It takes old and young with your gifted self. You gifted. Lord Jesus. You just gifted. You're so smart. You're so intelligent. You're pretty, but you don't do nothing. You ain't involved in nothing. You ain't tried, praise the Lord, to really set your head in anything. All you're doing is talk. Your dance don't mean nothing to me if you ain't trying to do nothing. Yeah. 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 Right. That's right. If the way church could see what I see right now, if you could see what God is about to do for us, Hallelujah. You would get in a hurry about the things of God. Amen. If you could see what God is about to drop in our laps, you would position yourself to receive it. I got one question for y'all. Are you all in. Yes. Everyone standing. I'm glad y'all shouted before the message. And I wasn't trying to go that way. Are you all in? Yes. Oh. Your actions show. When you get ready to marry a woman and you say, I will, and you get in there and you're like, she is difficult. Well, you knew that when you married. You get to the way church, Lord, they got some high expectations. Well, you know a minister that's moving like this can't have low expectations in function. We ain't going back to 89, 24, God. I know some of y'all hoping for those, those days are gone. Look around. The few things that you see that's if it ain't gonna be that way for long. God is a heavy weight. This is not just fun and games. I'm charged to be a witness in this earth. And I can't do it by myself. I looked at Lady Scott a few weeks ago. I said, Lady, I said, I, can't, I, I, I ain't going to go into 2019. Doing ministry like I did the past 10 years. Because if I do, I won't be around for my 50th birthday. All right. We got to cast our nets. Yeah. I was casting a net. Yes. I got to cast my nets. Y'all yeah. are my nets. Yeah. You understand what I want you to reflect. Because like I said, this sermon was not meant to excite your emotion anymore. It shot every service. I'm telling you, the way has plenty of joy. But I want you to begin to question yourself today. And the question is, 
What is my commitment level? Am I all in? Am I willing to do what it takes to go all the way with this ministry? In my own personal life, in my walk with God, In fact, you don't even need to ask yourself, what are you willing to do? Sometimes it's a matter of, what am I willing to let go? Because it's not so much all the stuff you got to do, but what is it that's hindering you? Oh, you got to get real with your step. What is hindering you from making that real decision? While you're thinking, I want you to grab your neighbor by the hand. Leave no one untouched. I want to pray for our church today. And the reason why I want to pray because I sense a strong grace for growth and expansion. We need wisdom for this next week. Do y'all understand what I'm telling you? Do y'all feel what I'm feeling? There are people out in the rain that needs to come into this house of refuge. We got to get out of ourselves and start thinking about what can I do to serve In the name of Jesus. Lord, I minister to them in a serious way. Help them understand the urgency of where we're at. Help them understand that this is a season for expansion on the next level. As we come before you, Lord, you made us. You know all about us. You know what season we're in. We want to be real with you. We're not here to make people shout. We're not here to make people think well of us. We're here because you brought us here. We ask you today to look on every distraction, everything that is hindering me from making a complete and a full commitment to what you have called us to. Remove it in my mind, in my heart. Make me ready, make me available for the things of God. I thank you today for what you're about to do. I thank you, Lord, that when we go into 2019, we're going to shift into a newness. Help us to be ready to handle the shift. Do it in Jesus' name. And we give you glory. And we give you the praise in your name. Come on, give it the glory. If you're a leader here, just wave your hand. Listen to me. And listen to me very carefully. When 2019 comes in, there is going to be a wave and a shift that's going to hit us so quickly that if you're not resolved in your mind to be focused, it's going to catch you unprepared. If you are a member here, I need you to understand that the weight of ministry will be too great. Listen to me good. It will be too great 
to continue to do things the way we have done it in the past. God is looking for committed and dedicated leaders and saints that will work this work. I promise you a shift is about to take place. I promise you a shift is about to take place. You better hear what I'm telling you, a shift. You think that what you've seen this year has been miraculous and a miracle, how he has added to us, you ain't seen nothing yet. Get ready, prepare your mind, get ready for the harvest. You members, seek somewhere to serve. Pray about it. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Because God is about to do the great things. Ben Leonard, the Lord gave me a word for you today, and I have to say it publicly. I wasn't going to take it to your side and say it, but I have to say it publicly. I don't know what this means to you, but there are going to be a few things that are getting ready to be dropped into your lap. A heavy responsibility is getting ready to be laid on your shoulders. And the Lord says, in order to withstand it, there's going to be a time of fasting and prayer that you're going to have to give to the Lord so that you can handle what's coming. Whatever's coming, man cannot stop it because it's been foreordained by God. There were some promises that was made to your father, hallelujah, that God has to make good. He's going to make it good in your day. Watch what the Lord does for you. Come on, tell him God thank you. Come on and tell him thank you. Come on and tell him thank you again. Hallelujah. We're going to let you go. I'm finished. I'm telling you, I'm finished, but I feel something stirring. I'm trying. I'm trying to be good. Because you know, praise the Lord, what happens. Glory to God. Leon, God says, step out. He says, step out. He says, you may want step. He said, but step out even the more. He says, it's when you walk in the water, that's when it's going to part. When you walk in the water, that's when it's going to part. You understand me? When you walk in the water, that's when, as long as you stand there looking at it, it ain't going to open up. He said, but when you step in the water, that's when it's going to part. He says, step out and trust me. And you will see God's hand move. Oh, y'all didn't know what I said. There are some people praying, Lord, that you're going to have to trust God for this next level. Oh, God. You're going to have to trust him in this next level. Even though you can't trust him, baby, you're going to have to trust him in this next level. I don't know, you're a guest of somebody, I know. Praise him, okay, God bless you. Glory to God, you're going to have to trust him on this next level. He says, I want to complete that on total, yes. He says, there's been some things in your life, glory to God. God said, I have brought you out of, I have delivered you. And some of the things that you went through would have killed the next person. In fact, you really are not supposed to be here. You're not even supposed to be standing. But because of the grace of God, you are here. And he said, you got to give him a total yes. Uh-huh, that's what he wants. He wants a total yes. Uh-huh. What's wrong with the understand it. 
at a level of spirituality is about to hit your house like never before. God, I say, hallelujah, is getting ready to visit you and he's going to set everything like it's supposed to go I need y'all to give God the praise. Hallelujah. He's getting ready to do this thing.
Oh! 